Anybody else's hands, this is a microphone. In my hands, it's a pipe bomb. too much bomb. to be done on this mic that I ain't doing good. Pipe bomb. Pipe bomb. Pipe bomb. Anybody else's hands, this is a microphone. In my hands, it's a pipe bomb. I represent the pipe bomb. Hey guys, I'm doing an Innistrad draft. I open up my first pack and it's complete fucking garbage. Look at this crap. Uh, crap, 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 crap. Uh, that's okay, but I mean, a 6-9, I have to exile two cards and I have to play blue, which is, you know, it's difficult because the blue creatures aren't exactly fantastic and a lot of the good ones get snapped up quick. I actually have to think about this one, but uh, for anyone out there who was wondering why I used that opening, it's because I've been kicked off of writing for websites and making videos for websites, but uh, not here. Yeah, and I'm the voice of the voiceless. I say the things you don't want to hear. I'll talk about that pick in a minute. This pick is insane. I love this card flashback and you can you know you have one creature on the board so if you get that one creature you're good here I'm gonna go with the guy he should be a third pick if you don't take him first or second he's a ghetto Gideon's law keeper but um I'll, I'll but uh the uh, two one flying first strike I took that because I like playing you know I like my creatures like I like my women uh small aggressive and uh, easy to cast here that brimstone should not be there pick four so I'm gonna immediately take that and hey I got a white red deck uh, I even have a curve so I don't know what that is everyone talks about it like it's the greatest thing but who gives a fuck about a curve Oh, and normally I would have it muted in the bed, the TV muted, and I would do this all professional like, but it's the fucking World Series, and I ain't muting shit. I'm gonna take this card because all the pros seem to like it. Although I like the Blazing Torch a little better. This card, it puts out two 1 1s with flying pretty quick, and if I can get like a zombie booster or something, I'm not a zombie spirit booster, then, um, then, uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it puts two 1-1s and it's an instant, which makes it even better. But, um... And, you know, I, I think this is the, you know, the one of the flip cards you'll see the most often. I like it. Two mana, get a first striker. If your opponent doesn't play anything, you get a 3-1 first striker. I mean, there's no downside to that. Except maybe, like, I don't know, something... Uh, here, there's really nothing, I mean, there's, there's the card that untaps stuff, and it has flash, it's like a ghetto deceiver exarch, but there's so many artifacts that can really fuck you in the ass that I just want to get, make sure that you have artifact removal. Here's a stupid pick. I take the vampire, but I cannot talk about how important it is to have enchantment destruction in your deck. Here, I should take the Shimmering Grotto because it helps with mana, but that's a pretty interesting enchantment. I mean, it gives your creature regenerate, plus one, plus one, if I want to splash in some black. You know, I've done, like, the seal, I've done the pre-release. I've never played black. Uh, here, the Riot Devil isn't a terrible card. But this is I, this card I kind of need for my uh, Innistra constructed deck. So, I mean, this is pretty early in the set, and uh, I have a habit of rare drafting. Here, uh, I'm gonna take that card because if you can force it, you can make a fake Valakut deck using it. That's shiny, so I'm gonna take that because shiny distracts me. I don't even look at the other cards in the pack. I've had to edit this song, so this was like a 30 minute video because people could not figure out things. But I have to just once again stress how important it is to have um, enchantment destruction, either something as simple as a bumble crush or a, a fox that exiles an enchantment or just anything. You need to get rid of enchantments that in this set, they're fast, they're angry, and they're quick. Now this second pack, I'm not going to lie to you, it pays for my draft. 
And it's a Snapcaster Mage. I don't even bother looking at the other cards. It's a sick fucking pack. Look at the cards in this pack, but that's a Snapcaster Mage. You take it and you move on. Don't even think about the other cards. Now, I'm just going to stare at it, do a little wowza. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know. Kind of excited right now. Not going to lie. That's a pretty pimp card to get second pick. Makes me wonder, with all the cards in that pack, there's no double. There's a double face, so there must have been either a foiled rare or. A, now I went with the one five flip card. I think this is the best non-black flip card in the set. Three mana. It's it's almost unkillable by most of the removal in this set and it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. So if you can get it out by turn 3, your opponent's going to have one big-ass fucking problem by turn 4 if he doesn't play anything. And if he doesn't, you still got a 1-5 blocker, which I can't argue with. Now, here I'm going to go with uh, the, the Sentry. Although that mask, that mask does some serious work. I better hope that some dude over there doesn't have a uh, uh, invisible stalker or something annoying. But that that dude, I mean, like when he when another when another creature you control dies, he becomes a five four trampler. I really don't argue with five four tramplers. So, especially when I have that. Um, that uh, kind of Wrath of God-ish thing, the closest Wrath of God you're going to get. It's a Wrath of God with Flashback, by the way, which is nuts, since everyone in Standard is playing Snapcaster with uh, Wrath of God now. Uh, here, I really should take the Bonds of Faith, but the Rolling Tremblers does an Invisible Stalker. So, I could, I could attempt to go to blue, but there you go. You, you, I love it when a pack has a card that you're going to pass, but it has an answer to. The Rolling Trembler is, is beast mode. I mean, does two damage to, and kills almost everything on the board that your opponent has. And it's going to kill that Invisible Stalker. Uh, here, I've never played with this equipment before, so I'm going to take it. I might have want to take the Vampire, but... That equipment, if you read it, is pretty badass. I mean, you put it on, let's say, a flyer in your opponent. A lot of red-green decks have no answers to flyers. So, it does double the damage, which I think is pretty good. Or you could put it on a smaller creature and take out a big creature. And since I like to play small, aggressive creatures, and I'm not going to play the Snapcaster, but I leave it out on the board so I can stare at it. Not that it's good to look at, but, you know. Whatever. Um, I'm going to take the uh, monster, Slay the Monstrous. Because I really don't feel like dealing with, you know, I'm not going to get any rebukes. Rebukes are probably taken like first or second pick sometimes. So, Slay the Monstrous is the next best choice here. Um, I should probably, you know, I like that Arc of Treason type deal more than other people. Other people don't like it that much, but when you're dealing with, let's say, a lot of green decks that get 7-7s, seven that's a nice card to have, especially if you have creature advantage. But I'm going to take that rat, I think, because I'll be... I had to actually think about this one. I hate thinking. When I think, I, I think myself. I should have taken probably the vampire. But I'm going to take the Ark of Treason because I like it. Now this is a nice card. One mana and it gives your creature plus two, plus two. I mean, just look at the front two. Oh, I love this pack. It's got the Doom Traveler and it's got that creature that has like first above first strike. That uh, little pimp ass uh, two one for two mana. Does one damage if it attacks a boss to a creature. Uh, Cobbled Wings might be a good pick here. Because, you know, flying is just so important. It's hard to deal with. I mean, 
If you can get a good creature and make it fly, you've got yourself in a pretty good position now. These are all crap. I think I'm going to take that green enchantment because uh, it was the last card and my mouse was already there. Make a wish should not be here right now, although I should have taken the artifact destruction. Regardless, make a wish should not be there. That make a wish should not be there either. I mean, four mana. Let's say a couple of your little low creatures die, you get them right back. It's it's insane. I should have taken the Kinder Cash just to hate on somebody playing green, but I've never seen that that card played in a draft or a sealed. Okay, so um, Rangers got a guy on second base with one out. And Josh Hamilton, arguably one of the greatest players in the history of baseball. Oh, yes, a forest. Arguably one of the greatest players is coming up to the plate, although, okay, wait. So, that white card's pretty beastly. But I'm not going to take it, so that's not how I roll. Uh, am I going to take it? Do I take that? I'm not sure. The Pitchfork Devil is, is really, like, fantastic. That's what I'm, like, wondering about here. Because, I mean, like, you can attack with it, and your opponent's afraid to block, and it kills almost every creature. But that right there, by the way, if, if I'm over a card and I'm looking at it for a little bit, I'm looking up the price on my other computer. Um, ooh, foil. Wait, don't, don't get distracted by it. It's just a foil. Uh, I think I'm going to go with... What do I take? Oh, it's shiny. I want it. The Rage Thrower is useful, especially with my little half-baked flashback Wrath of God. You know, I mean, it's a 6-drop. It's a 4-2, but if you're not playing someone with, uh... If you're, not, if you're playing someone who doesn't have red, you really don't have to worry about it if you use it primarily as a blocker and a way of dealing damage to your opponent. Um, I'm pretty sure I should have taken the Pitchfork Devil or the Vampire here, but I'm going to take the Rare, because that's just how I roll. Uh, I'm looking up the price right now, but I kind of want to try and build a zombie deck for Innistrad Block Constructed. Um, since, I mean, Innistrad Block is pretty wide open. I mean, there are some nice combo tricks and other assorted things, but... You know, that unbreathing horde, I think it is. No, don't don't hide the Snapcaster. No. Yes, I got another 1-5, but I'm not going to take it. Why? Because I have this odd feeling that I want to play black. Oh, wait, no, I take that uncommon because I actually need it. I have like three, I need a fourth. Yep, that's what drafting does when you don't feel like paying for everything. So, gonna hide some stuff. I don't know why. I mean, damn! Albert Pujols, FTW. Which, I, you know, someone had told me as a joke, it means fuck the whites. And, uh, well, I know now that that's not what it means. So,. Uh, let's see. It takes a little while in between here. Okay. Uh, the, uh, Blazing Torch is always useful. I mean, it's removal. And in a set that lacks removal, you need removal. I guess that didn't make much sense. Um, this set doesn't have much in terms of removal, and what removal it does have is going to get snatched up quickly. So, I mean, it works. Um, there's another Blood Craze, Neo, whatever, but there's a Skurdag thing, and that's just like a really ghetto, like, hanger. Parallel Lives, I don't have it, so I'd like to, and instead of paying for it. I mean, Into the Maw may be good here, but 
I don't know too many creatures I have to deal 13 points of damage to. And the Kessig Wolf isn't bad. This is not bad at all. But I'm going to take the Parallel Lives because... Once again, Rare Draft in 101. Take the rares. I, even the, um, the Scarecrow isn't bad here, considering... Oh, did I not take the... Yeah, I did take it. But the scarecrow's not bad. I mean, you just you gotta deal with a lot of flyers, especially if you play, end up playing blue. And the biggest mistake I think I made with this drafting was completely is being completely oblivious to enchantment destruction, which you'll see in this next pick. Because I mean, how many times do I have to say enchantment destruction is so valuable? That Silver Chase Fox would be fantastic in my deck, but I've never played with this card before. It's an equipment, gives a creature first strike. I figure, why not? I end up not playing it. Stupid decision. Uh, there's a Pitchfork Devil that shouldn't be there, so I'm going to take that. I mean, Pitchfork Devil, I mean, na name, name an uncommon that doesn't transform, that that doesn't kill. Name some uncommons that do transform that I can't kill. So, that's scary. I mean, and use that with my little pinger. My uh, really shitty Prodigal Sorcerer. Uh, I'm dating myself, by the way, with the Prodigal Sorcerers. Um, uh, really nothing here. There's like cobbled wings crappy counter spell but that card right there is pretty cool you run into a lot of red green werewolf decks in limited and if you're able to undo their entire all their work and turn their okay so obviously here in the third pack I can see red is wide open I'm gonna take my uh, ghetto fireball Which, by the way, should not be there at that point in the draft. I hate having to explain that. Uh, these cards all suck. Uh, Vampiric Fury, I want you dead. Okay. Yeah, I didn't even want to show the last two. Okay, so let's build a deck. How do you do that? I don't even know. I'm just going to take all my cards, put them in, add mana, and play like a 75 card deck. You know why? No one will ever see it coming. If I had enough tokens or token creating things, I might play that, but... Oh, and there's two tokens. But, um, no, there's my 2-1 Fire, there's my Slay the Monstrous, there's my uh, Sentry, there's my little uh, Ghetto... Okay, there, Nightbird Clutch is pretty good. Vampiric Fury, I want you out of my life. It can't go far enough off the board. Uh, Ironsmith is good. That's good. That is necessary, but sideboard. Brimstone is valuable. That's good if you have if you force the blue red uh, flashback deck, which is possible. One five, my favorite. Let's leave out the Riot Devil for now. Uh, I'm a player. A player. Now, what would be fun is if you use the traitorous thing with the uh, Skurdag thing. Take their creature and then kill it. But uh, I'm going to add in some stuff. Take out the card that I shouldn't have taken. I don't have enough. I mean, I have some instant and sorceries, but not enough to make it viable. Like, yeah, I mean, a usable card. Um, I don't know what a curve is, but I guess I have one. Not that I know what that, but I have a fairly strong deck here. The only thing that can beat it is pretty much every other deck in limited. So I'm in pretty good shape. So let's take you out. Great. I'm glad I wasted a pick on a 15 cent card. Oh, I love Traitor's Act. Let's see what you suggest, because magic knows all, right? That's why you get mana screwed every time. 